In this last capturing video, I want to review with you some methods for capturing materials when you can't just click and capture. That is, when Zotero doesn't automatically import everything for you. So we're going to start by looking at how you can manually enter item information into Zotero. And then we'll look at some shortcuts that you can take using ISBN and DOI numbers. And then finally, we'll look at what you do when you get a PDF that isn't automatically attached to uh, bibliographic information. Here we are back in Firefox, and I've opened Zotero, and I've opened it to the full window view. And this is the list of sources we have been accumulating up till now, although I've eliminated a few of them just for uh, to make things a little clearer. And let's jump right in and see how you would capture things manually. Now let's say your professor lends you a book that you can use in a research project, and it's not in the library database. The way in which you would add the bibliographic for the information for that source to your Zotero library would be to go to this button right here, New Item. And you would click on it, and the first thing you would do is you would decide what kind of item it is. If it's a book, you click Book. If it's a chapter in an edited volume, you would click Book Section. You can Conference Paper, Journal Article, Report. And if you click on More, you'll see that Zotero has a whole host of uh, categories to which you can attribute it to. Generally speaking, though, 90% of your sources will be books, book sections, or book chapters, and then journal articles. Let's take the example of a book here. So here's the book icon, but you can see that there's no bibliographic information, and you can see over here in the info panel that everything is blank. And very simply, all you do is you type everything in. So let's do that right now with a book I have here on my desk. You can see here that I've entered all the basic information. I have the title, I have the editor of the book, I have the place where the book was published, and the publisher of the book, and the year. And that's all the basic information you need for a book resource. One thing you may have noticed uh, is that while I was typing things in, Sotero gave me the option of selecting uh, names that I had already entered into my database. And so one way in which Zotero makes things faster is that, say, if you've already typed in Peter Lang with another source, it will remember that, and that way you'll only need to type in the first few letters, and Peter Lang will pop up and you can select it. So that's how you would enter the information for a new source manually into Zotero using the New Item button. The next uh, technique I want to show you is using the Magic Wand button here. Now, as we all know, all books published come with an ISBN number, and the ISBN number is usually on the back right corner of the back cover, or it's going to be on the title page with all of the other publishing information. So what you do is you can click here on the magic wand, and you enter the ISBN number for the book that you want to enter into Zotero. So I'm going to do that right now. I'll hit Enter. And what Zotero does is it looks it up in the WorldCat database and downloads all of the publishing information directly into my uh, library. There's one thing here that I want to draw your attention to, and that is the title for this book is in what we call sentence case. That is, the first letter is capitalized, but all of the other letters are in lowercase. And we know that in many American citation styles, like Chicago or Modern Language Association, you need to use what's called title case, not sentence case. Now, Zotero has a shortcut for this. And what you do is you go up to the title, you right-click on your mouse, and then you select Transform Text, and you select Title Case. Once you've done that, you can see that you now have the proper capitalization for the title. And this is great because sometimes when you download things from databases, they are in all capitals or they're in sentence case. And this is a quick way to put them in the right format so that you can have uh, the proper formatting in your bibliography. Another tip related to ISBN numbers that I want to show you is the fact that you can look them up on pages like Amazon. For instance, here I have the Scandals of Translation, and I have the ISBN number right here. What I can do is simply copy it, click on the magic wand, and paste it, hit enter, and the result is the same. 
I'll actually just delete this now because we don't need two versions of the same item. But I just wanted to show you one way in which you can quickly capture the ISBN number and then enter it into Zotero. And this is very good when you're dealing with websites that don't always properly import all of the information into Zotero. Sometimes it happens with Amazon. That happens a lot with Google Books. And so oftentimes you're better off finding the ISBN number on those websites and then just copying and pasting it here into the magic wand prompt. From ISBN numbers, I want to move to DOI numbers or digital object identifier numbers. And you remember that if every book receives an ISBN number, every scholarly article receives a DOI number. And just the same way that you can use the magic wand feature to look up ISBN numbers, you can use it to look up DOI numbers. So let's see how that would work. I'm going to just scroll over to my desktop where I have a PDF already open. I downloaded it from the translator and you can see that it has the publishing information and it includes a DOI number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that DOI number. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to Zotero, click on the magic wand and paste that number into Zotero and hit enter. And as you can see, Zotero has downloaded the information into my library. Now you'll notice that the PDF is not attached here. The way you can attach it is you can, let's see here, if we minimize this, I can go to my desktop where I have the article and then I can just drag it onto the entry for that item. And you'll see that it is now below it here, associated with it. And then I can click Rename File from Parent Metadata, and it's properly named. After DOI numbers, there's one last way I want to show you how to import things into Zotero, and that's by dragging PDFs directly into Zotero. So again, I'm going to minimize this window. I'm going to move it over a little bit so you can see the PDFs that I have on my desktop. And you can see that I've downloaded a second PDF, which I also got from the translator. And it does have a DOI number, and that's good to know. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it directly into Zotero. I'm not going to drag it onto any of these items. It's just going to be floating by itself. Once it's into Zotero, I will right click on it. And then I will say retrieve metadata from PDF. I'll close that window and you can see that Zotero looked up or read the PDF, found the DOI number itself, and then um, attached the PDF that I originally had to a parent item with all of the correct bibliographic information. And again, I can just right click on the PDF to rename it and I have the information and the PDF properly stored in my library.